Do you need to, do you need to move this stuff? Do you, do you need to move this? Oh, no, I'm fine. That's okay. fine. Which one of the microphones? The, this, you can move it. You can use any of them. I am never going to live that down. I have determined. Um, we had such a wonderful trip to Oregon. Um, we really did. We had a great time. Just so much fun. I went to bed. I was not, the, the time change finally caught up with me. And I was going on adrenaline anyway, because I was so excited. I had never seen the Pacific Ocean. Well, what she doesn't tell is I had already walked like six miles on the beach. And I finally decided I was going to go to bed. Well, if you put me in a bed with the sound of the ocean and the heater, and it was really, really comfortable, because we were right on the beach. Um, and QVC, I was out. <laughs> uh, do you all go, does anybody else in here love QVC? Yeah, oh, come on, raise them high. Oh, yes. And you don't have to worry about it's going to be something inappropriate if you wake up at 3 in the morning, you know? So QVC is my zone out, you know? And I have to, I, I was going to tell you this. I'm going to tell my husband. He is in this Hallmark movie mode. <laughs> <laughs> Have y'all watched the Hallmark Christmas things? Yes, he's been at, we've been in a Hallmark movie, you know, mode, which has been a lot of fun. Um, you never guess what's going to happen on them. They're just so unpredictable. <laughs> we've enjoyed that. Um, if you uh, have your Bibles, uh, turn it to Romans chapter 8. Um, we're going to look at some very familiar verses this evening. Do you not just love the owl theme. Isn't it so cute? I love all the owl stuff, and I'm not a collector at my house. I used to collect apples, and I got so many that when we moved, I, had, I got rid of all of them. And uh, I just, I had gazillions, because everyone is very kind to me, and I love presents. So I guess I'm going to redecorate my kitchen when I get home. With all the owl stuff, I love it, and my girls are going to be thrilled. So um, when she told me what the theme was for this year, um, immediately my mind kind of went to, what do owls say? Yeah, okay, that was pretty good. Let's try again. What do owls say? Whoo. All right, well, I want to speak to you this evening on Get Out of Whoville. Okay, <laughs> since it's Christmas, um, we're going to get out of Whoville a little bit. So let's read verse 35 together. I know that most of you know this verse. It's very familiar. So Romans chapter 8 and verse 35. You ready? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. So um, I really want to talk to you, like I said, a little bit about get out of Whoville. And that we see in this verse, it says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And of course, the answer is nobody can, right? Except ourselves. So let's have a word of prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for this evening. Lord, I thank you for the ladies that are here, and I ask now that you would please just um, bless the time that we have together, and may this be a little bit of a truth that would help a lot of people. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, I see, when I look around here, and I was kind of trying to watch as everybody came in, I see a lot of people that I went to school with to college with. If you were in college about the same time as I was, would you raise your hand? Okay, I saw you, aren't you? Okay, now, oh, okay, now I recognize your face. I am horrible with names, so you'll have to forgive me. Who else? Did I see another? Yeah, Tanya, okay, oh wait, oh, I don't know if I know you. Tell me your name. Shannon. Shannon, okay, I know who you are. All right. A lot of times in school, um, about the time that we were there, I just felt like it was so, there were so many people that I recognized a lot of people from their faces, um, but I did not know their names. I didn't know who they were. And I um, started seeing, after my husband and I were married, 
I started singing in the First Baptist Church choir. So believe it or not, as big as that auditorium at First Baptist is, you can sit there and after a little while, you could actually begin to look for people and know they were not there. And I used to wonder how, you know, Brother House would do that. But you could actually recognize when someone was missing because most of the time people would sit in the same you know, little area. So I knew lots of people's faces, but I had no idea who they were. And I'm not really very good with names. I, I try really hard, but I, I'm not good with that. And I will talk to you and go, I know exactly who you are, but I have no idea what your name is, so you have to help me. Um, I'm not very good with that. But I used to think a lot of times, how many times we don't really know people. We don't really know who they are. And I used to get, every year at college, I would get somebody who would come up and say, I just always thought you were so stuck up. <laughs> and I would always go, I don't know you. <laughs> were you. I mean, I was raised in the North, okay? I was born in West Virginia, and I don't claim that. So if you're from West Virginia, no offense, but <laughs> um, I was raised in Ohio, and I was kind of raised that you don't assume on acquaintances with people. In other words, my dad used to say, you know who they are, but you don't really know them, so you don't have any business talking to them. And that was very different when I got to college. You know, they told you, talk to everybody, you know, greet everybody, and I, that was a whole new world for me. Um, besides the fact that I was very young when I went to school, and um, just it was very different. So I've had to learn over the years to try to be more friendly and uh, try not to be afraid of that. Um, but I used to get that, and I don't know if people just thought that, um, lots of times I think people think if you can get up and sing that you got your act together. <laughs> Let me tell you, that's not true. Uh, um, I was 16 years old when I went to college, um, to Bible college. I was very, very young, and my parents really, uh, I wanted to go the year before, and my parents kind of pitched a fit. And now I sit and think, well, no wonder. <laughs> you know, hello. Um, but, you know, lots of times we don't really know who people are. And over the years, I've had people who said, well, I didn't know that about you, or I would have never guessed, or I never dreamed, or, you know, whatever. The, the, have you heard those kinds of comments before? So in Whoville, um, we live now in a, a, a country, I feel like, where everybody wants to tell everything. You, you, you get that? Um, they want to tell everything, not only about themselves. Everybody feels that they're entitled to have a voice. This is who I am to the world. <laughs> and, you know, I was not brought up like that, so to speak. Um, but uh, there's some negatives and positives to all of those things. But I have some points that I want to share a little bit with you and tell you a little bit about myself. Um, when you get up to speak in front of people, whether it's at your own church, whether it's at a guest or someplace else, a conference like this, um, you don't know me, and I don't know you. And all I can do is hope and, and pray and trust that I can say something that you can relate to and that the Lord would use to touch your heart and maybe teach you something. And all I really have to draw from is, is my life. So I don't, um, you know, try to get up and, and say, uh, by any means, you need to be just like me. <laughs> Don't, no. <laughs> My husband would agree with that, no. <laughs> but uh, I grew up in a home, um, very much my, my parents, I went to church all the time. My mother was the secretary of our church. When I was in second grade, she became the secretary. And I grew up in a Christian school from third grade until I graduated. And I was very blessed to have a lot of really good teachers and a lot of really good people who taught me very well. 
My father did not go to church for many years, and he claimed to be saved, but he was not a part of that. He kind of had did his own thing, and we kind of went and, and did our thing at the church. And so it was very different. Um, but I grew up, I don't know, I, I kind of want to say schizophrenic. Can anybody in here relate to that? You know, it was one thing at home, and it was a different thing at church. Do you, can you know what I'm talking about? Um, you know, it was, we didn't want anybody to know what actually went on at a house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, that's kind of kind of how I grew up. And growing up singing, it was not uncommon for me to go, and I started singing with with two girls, and I was 13 years old, and we grew up singing together, and I love your guys' harmony, it's beautiful. Um, but uh, we sang for years, and so it was not uncommon for us to go at any time into church, and the pastor would say, we're gonna have the girls come and sing. And you know, you just knew you had to be prepared. And because uh, that, was, that was very often. And so we were up in front of people, and it didn't matter you know, what we had done or, you know, we were going to sing. And uh, that's kind of how I grew up. It didn't matter what was going on at home. You know, you had to be prepared for that. So it was a little different um, throughout the years. I, I kind of, I don't want to dive right in, so to speak, but um, throughout the years I graduated, met my husband at college, and we've been in the ministry ever since. And God's been really good to us, and he has blessed us. But you know, we've had our, our issues and our interest, interesting times, so to speak, um, over the years, too. I grew up with um, abuse in our home. And, um, you know, that's one of those things where you meet people nowadays and they really are adamant about they want to have a voice. They want to be heard. And that's not wrong. But... You know, who are we? We don't know people. I always just tell my girls, you don't, you don't know those people, even though you think you know them, even though they're in church every Sunday. You don't know those people. And we were very cautious about ever letting our girls stay the night with people. But I find so often nowadays that I look back over all the things that the Lord allowed into my life, even at a very early age, and I think God used that to help me make some very important decisions at a very early age. And I'm very grateful for that. And it took me a long time to say that. Um, we don't like to say, I'm thankful for the hard times, because we might say it, but we don't really mean it. <laughs> um, the truth is, if we had it to go back and do over again, most of us would change everything. And we try to provide very different, so to speak, for our children and, and our homes, and that's not wrong. But, you know, some of those things are the things that make us who we are. And we look here, I clung to this verse as a young person a lot. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And I don't know who you are here today, and I don't know your background, and I have no idea what you've been through in your life, but I know that Christ loves you. He loves you. And he is working out his providence in your life. How many of you um, are familiar with, is it proteins? I think it was called proteins when I was a young, anybody, a few of you? Okay, we learned a definition in proteins that I still love to this day. And that was a long time ago, so if I can still remember it, it's a good thing. It said, the providence of God means that every event and circumstance in my life is designed and controlled by God for my good and his glory. And boy, did I latch on to that as a young person. Think with me. Every event and circumstance in my life is designed and controlled by God for my good and his glory. And that's a, that's a big thing. So too often nowadays, the first whoville, the first bad thing, or I guess the first who in whoville that we run into so often is who am I? 
We have a whole generation, it seems like, who can't decide who they wanna be. And, and sadly, even my generation, they spend three quarters of their life trying to figure out who they are, who's the real them, and by that time, their children are grown and they've had absolutely no impact because their children are left wandering and aimless, and now their children are doing the same thing. Um, I work with a, a very sweet lady, and she's a good friend of mine. Her 19-year-old just called her last week and said, I'm going to take some time off college, Mom, because I need to find who I am. <laughs> now, those of us that are older now, um, we sit and laugh at that. We giggle, right? Right, yeah. That, yeah. No. You know, but sadly, we do the same thing as Christians. We can't decide who we want to be. Do I want to be an evangelical Christian with no standards? Do I want to be a fundamental Baptist? What do I want to be? Who am I? You know, and we were given many things. I was given many things growing up. Those things made me who I am today. And maybe I didn't understand them. Maybe I didn't agree with them. But I learned to trust the Lord because of them. And, you know, sometimes I think we just need to apply those principles to our lives. Um, Lord, I don't understand everything that my pastor just taught me. I really don't understand why we're supposed to do this or do that or not do this or not do that, but I'm going to trust, and later I will understand. Why do we get that in life about everything except when it comes to church? except when it, our, what our pastor says. We're very, very busy trying to figure out who we are as Christians. And I so wish that we would decide that we're just going to be fundamental Baptist Christians and do what we've been taught and trust our pastor. Isn't that, isn't that something? Um, we hear that all the time. We've had many, over the years, many teenagers who've come in and tell us, I don't really feel like this is the real me. Have you heard that one? <laughs> I have to be the real, I have to be true to myself. Um, oh my, if I were true to myself, I'd be sitting in the penitentiary. <laughs> Long time ago. That wouldn't be a good thing, ladies. <laughs> um, you know, none of us get up in the morning and look in the mirror and say, I just have to be true to myself. This is who I am. <laughs> no, it takes a long time to look like this. You know, <laughs> um, I had a birthday last Monday, and it, the older I get, the longer it takes. <laughs> you know, the more work it is, right? Um, you got to slap on all the goo, and you know how it goes. But uh, we, don't wanna, we don't need to be true to ourselves. That's not a good thing. Um, we need to be true to the Lord and true to the Lord's principles. So who am I is number one. Number two, and I'm, I'm going to mention this one quickly because tomorrow I'm going to talk about this one more. Who hurt me? Have you heard that one? Our world is just all full about who hurt me, who done me wrong. You know, when I was a kid, um, we're musically experienced people. You can finish this for me. Have you ever heard the, um, hey, won't you play another somebody done somebody wrong song? Y'all remember that one? I was a kid when that one. I wasn't, I was, you know, I'm 34. Ha, ha, ha. That's what I tell my son. He's not buying either. But anyway, <clears throat> we spend half our lives trying to figure out who hurt us, and we want to make sure that everybody knows who hurt us. You know, who hurt me? Who done me wrong? Um, I'm not, I, I'm, I don't ever try to make light because I have been there and I have walked a mile in those shoes and I know how badly it hurts. But I also know that you will never fix an inward problem of the heart through outward circumstances, through outward stimulus. And so often, too often, we sit and we think, if they would just acknowledge what they did, it would make it better. If I could just be heard. Well, can I, can I tell you from personal experience, it don't make a hill of beans. It's about your heart. Can I tell you that? Um, can I tell you that many years into my adulthood, I had the person that was responsible for my abuse call me one day on the telephone and 
crying and apologized. Can I tell you that it was nothing more than God slapped me upside the head and said, there, you got your way. Because you know how many times I had prayed, Lord, if they would just say they were sorry. And God said, okay, let's see what you do with that. And you know what? It didn't do anything. It didn't fix anything. Can I tell you that? You know, sometimes we want retribution and we forget the fact that God is the one who is the justifier. And we forget that it's in God's timing. And that sometimes things are not going to be evened out until we see the Lord. And then we will understand. So number two, who hurt me? And we'll talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. Um, number three, who will help me? Do you get frustrated? I have to tell you, both of my girls have graduated from college and they've moved back home. And this is fun. <laughs> it's a whole new world, I have to say. Um, one of my, uh, my oldest daughter's 24, and my youngest is 22, and then we have a 15-year-old son. And uh, he's bigger than all of us, so we try not to let him sit on us. But um, the girls are wonderful, and they're both working, but they've moved back home, and it has been a very interesting year. <laughs> um, can any of you relate to that? Yeah. Can you relate to suddenly your laundry has tripled again? <laughs> but nobody knows how to push the button on the washing machine. <laughs> uh, you know, your grocery bill expand. You know how it is. I mean, we can sit and complain, and we can sit sometimes and have our pity parties and say, nobody wants to help me. I'm so sad. You, you know, you do that. Um, pastor's wives, we do that in church too, don't we? I, and I have been so guilty of that one. Nobody wants to help me. Um, you know, sometimes... It's, you know, not that people don't want to help. It's sometimes we don't want to let them, so to speak, or we don't make our needs known. Who will help me? We say that a lot of times. Um, the next one, see if any of these sound familiar. Who is to blame? Um, we can say who's to blame for my past, who's to blame for my present circumstances instead of being happy. Um, sometimes I think there are a few people who will die and say, who's to blame? <laughs> who caused me, you know, who caused this? We hear that all the time. Our society is just one who will not accept personal responsibility. I finally, um, this past year, I had a, an owl theme in my classroom, and I had a sign, and it said, don't make excuses, make, you know, commitments, make accomplishments, make achievements, whatever, um, but don't make excuses. You know, we need to stop making excuses when it comes to why we can't serve God. Well, you know, preacher, I would be glad to teach a Sunday school class, and I would be glad to be there, but, um, and we have some excuse. I can't. I am afraid to get in front of people. You know, I don't want to talk. I don't, I don't know. You know, and we can all come up. We've all heard a million different things. But in our personal lives, you know, we come up with a lot of excuses too. Well, Lord, you know I would go soul winning, but uh, Lord, you know I would like to be a better testimony, but um, can I tell you, God really had to work on me that with this one this year too. Because, you know, as much as I know, and I'm a pastor's wife and have been for a long time now, um, the thing of personal soul winning and personal goals for the Lord, I felt like I had let slide a little bit. And God had to deal with me with that. God had to work on me and push me a little bit. And I, I, I have made some improvements. I was proud of myself for that. But um, we, we look for excuses and as long as we will accept the excuses that Satan keeps handing us, he'll just keep feeding them to us. It doesn't matter if it's the same one. He'll give us a different one. And it doesn't matter. It just keeps going and going. So who's to blame? Um, do we blame the Lord? Lots of times. 
We just sit back and say, well, you know, God, you messed up on this one. He must not have really known what he was doing. Um, but he does, and he is always in control. Uh, the next one, who do you think you are? We heard that one? <laughs> who, do, who do they think they are to be judging me? I will tell you right now. I tell my girls, I will judge you. Get in the line. Line forms to the right, and don't get out of line till I call on you. <laughs> and they kind of laugh. That was funny. You were supposed to laugh. Okay, I'm just joking. All right, um, but you know we hear that all the time. Well, who do you think you are? Don't judge me. You can't judge my Christianity by how I look. You can't judge my Christianity by whether or not I'm in church. You can't judge, and we hear it. Uh, it doesn't matter. There's a bazillion different things you can fill in the blanks. And we hear it over and over. Don't judge me. Who do you think you are? Well, who did that person think they are? You know, if they, and we forgot all about the Bible says that iron sharpeneth iron. We forgot all about the Bible says we're supposed to try to edify each other that we're supposed to not despise the chastening of the Lord. Because nowadays, have you all been in this situation? You don't even have to say anything. I have some family members, and I don't have to say a word. I don't have to do anything. I can just smile, and they would still think, they would leave saying I was mad at them for something or that I was judging them for something. You know people like that? Yeah, we, we all have that, um, but that, you know, that's one that we need to leave. Leave it. Get out of Whoville. Um, who do you think you are? Who do they think they are? Don't judge me. Um, no, the next one, who is at fault? And again, we try to find somebody to blame, but we don't want to accept that responsibility for ourselves. And we sit, sometimes I think, again, I can tell you from personal experience, sometimes I think that if we could take the person who hurt us the most and crucify them on the lawn of some church, you know, upside down, and burn the church to the ground, because the church is always to blame too, right? I don't think they would be satisfied. Now, they, they say they would, but you know what? They wouldn't. They wouldn't be satisfied because it doesn't fix what's inside, ladies. The problem is with our hearts and not trusting in the Lord. We will never get out of Whoville without the I am. Let's read down, and you can read silently as I read. Look at verse 37 and 38. It says, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Verse 38, for I am persuaded. Boy, I wish we could have a group of ladies who would leave a conference like this. Because we all go to them, and we have conferences in our church and whatever. But I wish we could have a group of ladies who would be persuaded who would be committed and diligent about doing what God wants and just, just being what God wants. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. Let's do it because God says to do it. It doesn't matter what anybody else does. It doesn't matter if the whole world does not have the same dress standards as I do. I had to determine, bless God, I'm going to do it because God said it. If we taught our children one thing, it was never mom and daddy were the bad guys. It was this is what God's word says. And this is why. It's about doing what God wants. We will never get out of Whoville and all of that focus on our own lives, our own hurts, without the I am. We have to be persuaded. Read the rest of it with me. That neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is the only hope that we have. Way too often we feel like, um, well, I, 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 
I can use some kind of outward something. Maybe I need therapy. Maybe I need to find a group of friends who will support me. Maybe I need the self-help book. Maybe I need, and you fill in the blank. There's a bazillion different things. But, you know, maybe I need some of this outward that will help my inward. But the only thing that helps is God. And it's a work in our heart. God is so good, and he'll do a work if we'll trust him, if we'll believe he really will. Look at Philippians, and this is also, again, a, just a very familiar verse. Philippians 1, verse 6. This is, I, are y'all, people ask me all the time, can you, uh, what's your favorite song? I, can, I could no more pick a favorite song than I could pick a favorite body part. You know, <laughs> I just, I have so many, so much music. I love music. And I could no more pick, it seems to me, like a favorite verse from the Bible. I have a really hard time with that. You know, do, do any of you? Yeah, I do. I have a horrible time. And for a while, I, I uh, picked this as my, my life verse, so to speak. Um, I started, usually when I sign my name, if I sign Bibles, I sign Philippians 4.4 just because I want to carry on Mrs. Evans. You know, I was, uh, her, her name is Marlene. Mine is Marlena, with an A on the end. Um, but one year for my birthday, she wrote me such a sweet letter and told me I would be her adopted namesake. So I try to hang on to that. Um, but I love this verse. Um, this is one of my favorites. Read it with me. Ready? Philippians 1.6. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it, until the day of Jesus Christ. Often, people used to say to me over the years, you're so confident. How do you get up in front of people like that? How can you get up and talk? How can you get up and whatever? You know, um, I have to believe that God started something many, many years ago. And I have to truly believe in my heart that God can finish it. And he's going to. I think sometimes that might be our problem. When we get caught up in Whoville, and it's all about us, we forget that it's the Lord is the one that's at work. It's about him. It's about his glory. It's about what he wants to do through you and with you. If he began a good work, he's going to do it. God keeps his word. If anybody keeps their word, it's God. Yay, don't you love that? I mean, because I got to tell you, I may not keep my word sometimes. I try, but, you know, I, I'm not the greatest. Uh, like I said, I may forget your name tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I forget my own name sometimes. But in all sincerity, we got to bank on God. At one of the most critical times in my life, someone, I was being confronted with something and it was a real, you know, you have those blow ups and all that good stuff. Um, I remember my words and I'll never forget it. And I, I guess I didn't necessarily mean to say it, but at the same time, looking back, I know that it was the Lord because I looked at someone and I said, if I don't have God, I don't have anything. And I walked out and it was like, do you have God? I don't, I don't know how people live without the Lord. I really don't. I don't know how they make it. I don't know how you get out of bed in the morning. Um, because I just, I couldn't live with it. There's no way. I'd be in the loony bin. Trust me. My, you know, I have, I have family there. They know me. <laughs> but, um, no, seriously, I, you know, I, we all have heartache. I don't know you. I don't know your life, but I know we all have those things. And we come to meetings like this looking for encouragement. And if I could give you anything to encourage you, I'm telling you, trust the Lord. And let him trust that he is doing a work in your life. He can do it when we can't. I've seen it over and over to where I had to throw my hands up and, and get out. Leave it with the Lord and trust that he, he has a plan. It's great. I mean, it's kind of cool, really. I mean, I have plans for my girls, which, by the way, before I forget, whoever the single guy was, we need to talk. 
<laughs> she sends me this picture the other day. Anyway, not for me, for my daughter. I have a 24-year-old. She's not dating. If you have someone available, I'll be glad to give you a picture because um, she's in my house taking up space. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, I love her to death, bless her heart, but I told her I'd talk to you. <laughs> she was like, oh. Um. Anyway, trust that God has a plan. You got to trust that, right? Whether, no matter what it is, no matter who you are, God is working in your life if you let him. Too often, we don't let him. And we live in Whoville, and Whoville is all about me. Who cares? Who cares about me? Who done me wrong? Who hurt me? It's all about me. We got to get out of Whoville. So I hope maybe that, again, that would encourage you some. And I, I love the owl theme. I love the way that that worked. And I hope that it's been a blessing to you. Thank you so much.